Welcome to Electro Online. In this example, we're going to find the area bounded by two polar curves. The two curves, R1 is defined by the number 3, which means we have a circle of radius 3. The second curve is the same equation that we used in the previous video, R2 is equal to 2 plus 2 times the cosine of theta. Notice we're trying to find the area defined by this region right here between these two curves. The approach is the same. We draw two radial lines. We define the area in between as the small dA. But notice to do that now, we find the area of the entire cone-shaped region or triangle-shaped region and then subtract this portion from it so that this will be remaining. So dA is one half R2 squared d theta, which gives us the area of this entire triangular shape based upon this equation right here and then subtract from that the one-half r1 squared d theta, which is the area defined by the circle shape right here. So we take the whole area minus this, and we get the remaining area. So we can define then the area of this region right here to be equal to the integral of dA from theta1 to theta2, theta1 defined by this angle right here, theta2 defined by this angle right there. And realizing the perfect symmetry between those two sides, we can say simply by doubling the, the value of the integral, but only integrating from 0 to theta 2. So that means that we're going to replace dA by what we define dA to be, which is right here. And then notice that we have 2 times 1 half, because we can factor out a 1 half. So 2 times 1 half is 1. Then we're simply left with r2 squared minus r1 squared d theta. And that means you can also write this as being the integral from 0 to theta 2 of the function of theta, uh, that would be function 2 of theta uh, squared, like this, minus, that would be the function 1 of theta quantity squared and times d theta. So remember that r represents the function, so it's basically function 2 squared minus function 1 squared d theta, theta integral from 0 to theta 2, and that should give us the entire area right here. So let's go ahead and do that and see what we get. So the area is equal to the integral from 0. Now, what is theta sub 2? Again, sometimes the most difficult part of integrating polar functions like this is finding the boundaries of the integration, the limits of integration. So to find the point right here that defines the angle theta sub 2, we're going to simultaneously solve the two functions. So we're going to set r1 equal to r2, r1 being 3, and r2 being 2, time, two plus 2 times the cosine of theta. Then notice we can, uh, let's see here, we can subtract 2 from both sides, solve this for cosine of theta, theta being the inverse cosine of 1 half, which means that theta should be plus 60 or minus 60 degrees. That's, of course, these two angles right here. So therefore, we'll take this angle being 60 degrees, and that will be the limit of integration that we're going to use. So from 0 to 60 degrees, r2 squared, which is that function squared, which is 2 plus 2 times the cosine of theta squared, minus r1 squared, which is 3 squared. And of course, we want to put some brackets around that times d theta. And then if we then multiply all that out, we get the following. This is equal to the integral from 0 to 60 degrees of 4 plus, that's 2 times 2 times 2, that's twice the product of the 2, which is 8 times the cosine of theta. Let me move out here so you see what I'm writing. And then the last term squared, which is plus 4 times the cosine square of theta, minus 9. And the whole thing times d theta. All right, cleaning it up a little bit and then realizing that I have the cosine square of theta, so I have to use identity there. So we can say that the area is equal to the integral from 0 to 60 degrees of 4 minus 9, which would be minus 5, plus 8 times the cosine of theta, plus 4 times, when we write the cosine square of theta, as an identity, we can write this as 1 half times 1 plus the cosine of twice the angle, like this, and then the whole thing times d theta. All right, so now we're going to simplify this a little bit more. We have 4 times a half is 2, 2 times 1 is positive 2, 
add to minus 5, so we get area is equal to the integral from 0 to 60 degrees, minus 5 plus 2, which is minus 3. We have 8 times the cosine of theta. And then we have 4 times 1 half, which is 2, 2 times the cosine of 2 theta. So we're going to write this as, uh, yeah, plus, hmm, yeah, 2 times the cosine of 2 theta, all times d theta. Now, when we integrate that, we have to realize, since we have the cosine of 2 theta here, we need a 2 d theta to integrate that. I'm not going to write the 2 there because I'm also going to use the d theta for these two terms right here, but realizing that this 2 will drop off because we need a 2 d theta for the integral of that portion of the integrand. But now we're ready to integrate, so this becomes equal to minus 3 times d theta, that would be minus 3 theta, and then 8 times the cosine of theta, that would become um, 8 times the sine of theta, plus 8 times the sine of theta. And then this integrator becomes the sine of 2 theta, plus the sine of 2 theta, all evaluated from 0 to 60 degrees. Now notice, since the angle is not, let's say, uh, pi or something like that, we notice that this and this term will not disappear, will not go to zero because the upper limit will not allow us to do that. And instead of writing 60 degrees, we could also say that this is equal to pi divided by 3. So sometimes it helps to write it like that. So now let's go ahead and plug in the upper limit. So we have area is equal to, plug in the upper limit, we get minus 3 times pi over 3, so the 3's will cancel, plus 8 times the sine of 60 degrees. Now, the sine of 60 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2. So it'll be 8 times the square root of 3 over 2 plus the sine of 2 theta. Now, 2 theta is 120 degrees, so that also gives you the square root of 3 over 2. So that's plus the square root of 3 over 2 minus, when I plug in the lower limit, well, when I plug in 0 for theta, I get 0 plus 0 plus zero, so we don't get any contribution from the lower limit. Now, we, all we have to do is combine those two together. So since this is a negative here, we'll put that in the back. So the area is equal to nine times the square root of three over two minus pi. And that would then be the area defined by the two curves, or the area between the two curves, r2, which is two plus two times the cosine of theta, and r1, which is equal to three. And that's the answer for that particular region, and that's how it's done.